Now I'm going to talk about representing uh, sign numbers or positive and neg negative numbers. I'll also talk a little bit about zero pairs and then um, representing uh, numbers numerous ways um, with positive and negative numbers. Now I'm using here some tiles. Uh, these green ones, I don't know if you can see the color very well, but this is a green and this represents a positive one. The gray represents a negative one. And um, so I'm going to be using an assortment of these tiles. If you want to do the exercise along with me and you have tiles, um, then go ahead and get them out and, and we can do them together. Um, if you don't have tiles and you want to make some up, just get some scratch paper, put a bunch of, of pluses and negatives and cut them out and then you could easily do it with us. Okay, first, what I want to do is represent an amount. So I'm going to represent the number three and I'm going to use that by using three tiles. And so this amount or this group represents three. I have three positives. Now say I want to represent the number five. Well, I can just throw in a couple more and now this group represents five. I can do the same thing with my negative numbers. Say I want to represent a negative four so I can put in my group four negatives. I've got one, two, three, four. That represents negative four. If I want to represent negative six, I'm going to add to that two more. So now I have a total of six negatives, or negative six. Now, before we move on to representing numbers, I want to share with you zero pairs. And so I'm going to take away all but one of these negatives and then I'm going to add to that a positive one. Now, when you have a positive one combined with a negative one, your result is going to be zero. And if you think of it in terms of money, I have a dollar, but then I owe a dollar, and I'm left with no money at all in the end. So um, this is going to be referred to as a zero pair because when you combine the positive amount with the negative amount, your ending result is zero. Okay, so they represent zero. Now we can have any number um, of uh, assorted groups here. We could say we've got um, a couple more pairs here. Again, we've got three positives, three negatives, but the result or the amount that this represents is still going to be zero because I have three zero pairs. There's one here, there's one here, and then there's one here. Okay, and we could say we want to add um, a couple more and I'm going to mix them up. Let's do that instead um, of having it so nice and neat. And I'll, I'll just go ahead and do something like this. So when you have a situation like this, you just want to group the pairs. Oops. And notice all of them pair up, so there's nothing left, big fat zero. All of those zero pairs equal zero. Now, what happens if we don't have zero pairs uh, within our group or, or we don't have a negative for every positive. So for instance, in this group I have two positives and one negative and I want to know the value of this group. Well you can see that these two pair up and so what's left is my positive one. So two positive combined with a negative is going to equal one. That's what it represents. Let's say we have um, two more positives and just one more negative. And we want to know the value of this combination. We've got four positives, two negatives, and hopefully you can see that our, the value of this amount is going to be two. And that's because we have two negative or two zero pairs. Here's a zero pair, here's a zero pair. What's left are two positive numbers. Now we can do the same thing with negative numbers. Say we have 
uh, four zero pairs, but then we have two negatives left over. So the value of this group is going to be negative two. And again, if we take away, let's do a different combination, and I'm going to mix it up this time. Um, I'll just throw some out here, and then we'll have to figure it out. Okay, so we've got this group. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pieces. I want to know the value of this group. Make pairs. What's left are two negatives. Now what I want to do now is show you how we can represent numbers using a different combination of tiles. So for instance, if I want to represent the number 2, well, an easy way is to just use two positive tiles. That represents 2. Now I want to think of two more ways to, to represent the number 2. Well, if I use three pieces, how many zero pairs do I need in order for this to represent two? Well, I'm going to need one more zero pair, okay? Or I'm going to need one, one I'm going to need a negative one, that's what I meant to say. So let, let me move this out of the way, just so it's not confusing. This represents two because this is a zero pair, positive two. We can do it another way. We could say we add one more positive two. Now in this case, it represents three, but I want it to represent two, so I need to add to it a negative one. And now this amount represents positive two. Now we could have made much larger groups, um, but I kept it pretty small. Go ahead and do a little exercise. If you have the tiles, and if not, you could just draw pluses and minus on a piece of scratch paper. Represent the number three. And I'm going to give you the first one, three tiles, three positive tiles. Think of two other ways that you can represent three using both positive and negative tiles. Pause the video and work on that and then start up again. Well, one way is to maybe add one more positive tile, and with that, a negative tile. Here we have four positives and one negative, but still the value of this group is three. Again, I could add maybe, um, let's do, let's do, let's mix it up. Let's do, add two more. So now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, but I only want to represent three, so I need to add to that group two more negative ones. Zero pair, zero pair, zero pair. What's left is the value of my amount, which is three. Now there are multiple ways that you could do these problems, but I want you to just get the idea that, you know, the number three is just not made up using three positives. We could make three any number of ways. Same with negative three. If we were doing this, if we wanted to find negative three, instead of having three positives, we could add three negatives, something like this. And so you can see the zero pairs make that zero, and what's left is our negative three. We'll be working a little bit more um, in the next week or so with integers and um, working a little bit with algebra tiles and number lines. If you have questions, ask in class.